Section 1.2, classifications of matter. Matter is classified by its state. So every material can be in various states. So they can be in solid and liquids or gases. Um, normally by how much energy is in it. The more energy that you put into a material, uh, the the regular pattern of a solid breaks apart and then you have a liquid. Uh, they're bound together in a little bit of a different way. Then gases, if more energy is given, gases uh, have a different attractions to each other differently than they would as solids. So um, they can, you can have uh, gases and and water at the same temperature you could have gases and solids and liquids all at the same temperature so a gas or a vapor um, doesn't have a fixed volume or shape uh, it conforms to its container uh, it's compressible you can you can compress a gas you can increase its pressure and make it and squish it into a into a tank to blow up your party balloons Liquid really can't do that. Its volume is independent of the container. Uh, so the same amount of uh, fluid would, would fill different shaped containers. So it doesn't have a fixed shape. But you, you can't compress it. You can't get it tighter than it already is. A solid um, has a volume, a specific volume, and a specific shape. Um, independent of the container it's in. So uh, an ice cube would just kind of pile into a glass. It doesn't fill the shape or change to the shape of the glass. Very rigid, uh, kind of in a matrix, and it's also incompressible. So the if you were to describe these, um, these states on a molecular level, the gases move very far apart from each other. They're, they're speeding. Um, at nearly the speed of light. They're bumping into each other elastically, um, bumping off the side of the vessels. Uh, liquids are closer than a gas, but they are still moving rapidly, and they slip and slide over each other. Solids don't have enough energy to slip and slide. They're kind of in a, in a definite arrangement. They're, they're closely packed and, in, um, and holding on to each other uh, very you know, rigidly. So now we're going to talk about pure substances. A pure substance in chemistry is anything that's going to have um, a distinct properties. So something that you can describe, like, like the property of gold. You know what gold looks like. You know how heavy it is based upon its um, uh, the size. You know whether it conducts electricity or not. You know all kinds of things. You could know whether it would react with a certain other chemical. Um, water would have its own properties. Um, you could say table salt would have its own properties. That's th These are either going to be one type of matter or more than one type of matter. So if you were to have one type of matter that has its own properties, uh, like gold, that would be an element. So an element it can't be decomposed into simpler substances. So it's one type of matter. And remember, there's about 118 types of matter that are known right now, known and named. Um, a compound is two or more elements that are, that are chemically combined with each other. As I said, there's about 118 known elements, and they vary in abundance. So oxygen, silicon, aluminum, iron, calcium make up about 90% of the Earth's crust. So that includes the, the continents and the atmosphere and the oceans, all of this together would be the crust. And so of the 118 types of matter, there's only a few types that make up all the rocks. Um, and if you were to look in the human body, you would have a different Set, set of uh, just a very few. You'd have oxygen, carbon, and hydrogen. Just those three make up um, more than 90% of the mass of the human body. So just very few. So if you're looking at biochemistry, biochemistry, you can, I have plastic models of bio, bio mo molecules 
where there's just three or four colors because there's very few very few types of matter that really interact in all the millions of different ways that would make you alive. So each of these uh, are elements are given it's a unique symbol, okay, a chemical symbol. It's an abbreviation, and they're organized into the periodic table. So the periodic table is is not just a list of all of the elements, but they're put there in a very specific way in order for you to gain information of how they're related to each other. And each uh, symbol is either a one or a two-letter um, symbol uh, derived from its name somehow. So m most of them are going to be in English, so it'll be the name will be in English and the symbol will be derived from that name. There's a f one in German, I believe, and um, several in Latin. So we have it easier than most most countries learning this because they wouldn't even call it the same thing, but yet they'd have to learn the, the symbol derived from English. Um, a compound uh, can also be broken apart back into its um, elements. So for instance, this is an example of electrolysis. You've got water here and water is H2O. So on the left you can see the molecules of H2O. And if you were to to uh, have a like a platinum electrode attached to some kind of a power source like a battery, you could break the break the water down into the component gases. For ages they tried to do this with water all the way into the 19th, 19th uh, century. And there were many people convinced that water had to be its own element because they didn't know how. I mean, if you boiled it, it was still water. If you froze it, it was still water. If you melted it, it was still water. And they, they couldn't do, they didn't figure it out uh, until someone said, well, let's use electricity. Um, someone must have dropped their hairdryer in the bathtub or something. But but in any case, it breaks it breaks down. And you can see from the levels there that you've got more hydrogen gas being broken apart than oxygen gas. And so this H2O is a, it's a recipe, it's a ratio of all the stuff that's in it. It's important to mention that compounds have different properties from their component elements. So water is different, you could describe water differently than you would describe hydrogen gas, which was, could blow up. The Hindenburg was full of hydrogen gas. Water doesn't blow up. Oxygen is the same, very flammable. Um, water is not flammable. You put fires out with water. So when you have atoms that have its one set of properties and they combine chemically with each other, you have completely new sets of properties. Um, there's also something to remember here, and that's called the law of constant composition or the law of definite proportions. So a compound is always consists of the same combination of elements. So water, no matter where water is, is always 11% hydrogen and 89% oxygen. So its, its composition is constant. It's always H2O, and it's always a certain amount of hydrogen, a certain amount of oxygen. So water is water is water. A mixture is a combination of two or more pure substances. So many things that you see in the world are, are not pure substances, but it's a mixture of them. And you can have mixtures in gas. Air is a mixture. Uh, you could have mixtures in, in, in fluids. You, your Kool-Aid is a mixture. There's, there's sugar there, there's dyes there, there's, there's citric acid and flavors there, there's water there, and it's all just com completely mixed perfectly, and that's called a homogeneous mixture. So it's uniform throughout. So like clean air, vinegar, this would be a solution, a Kool-Aid. Um, a, a heterogeneous mixture doesn't have the same uniform composition. So like trail mix or beef stew or something like that to where at different places you have different components that are not completely homogenized. So um, vari mixtures have variable composition for that reason. So if you put salt and pepper together on a plate, 
um, they don't combine chemically. They're just salt and pepper. So um, here's a picture of this is this is granite. Granite is a is a mixture. There's different minerals there that were laid down at the same time and then compact together, and they're just they're sitting there kind of glued together, but they're not they've not reacted together. They're not they're not doing something chemically. They're just sitting in next to its neighbor. Um, this is copper sulfate, which is a which is a compound, but if you were to put it in water, everywhere in the water is going to have that same composition, and that's what a solution is. So a solution would be a homogeneous mixture. So here we have a flow chart of matter that you can ask yourself different questions and be able to, to say all the different types of matter that there is and separate them in your mind. So if it's uniform throughout, you either have a, um, you, you would either have a homogeneous mixture if it's uniform, or if it's not uniform, you have a heterogeneous mixture. You've got something together. Um, if you look at that and it's homogeneous, okay, you can have homogeneous without having elements or compounds. Like you could have Kool-Aid and it's homogenized. Everywhere you look, it's the same. But does it have a, a variable composition? If it does have a variable composition to where there's sugar in one place and water in another, if you look microscopically, then you've got a solution. That's a, that's a homogeneous mixture. But if it, um, if it doesn't have variable composition, if it has the same composition everywhere, then you have a pure substance. And then pure substances are either one type of matter, which is an element, or more than one type of matter, which is a compound.